Hello good people, all boys here ready to share some tips and tricks with you. Today I'm going to talk about the invisible shape dividers and how you can make your own. I'll mention two methods, one of which includes a little bit of custom CSS work and for that reason you're going to need Elementor Pro and the second one that includes usage of my own Elementor add-ons. I'm also about to share 10 to 15 copies of Image Mask Elementor add-on and you'll find out how to participate or apply during this session. Alright, let me first say that Elementor's default shape dividers kinda suck because they make sense only when the flat colors are being used as a target section background, which means they're pretty useless when it comes to gradient or image type of background. Another flaw is the fact that they will work with sections only, as you know. And the last drawback is the fact that you cannot use or upload your own shape divider. So I'm about to address all of these issues with a very simple solution that works for both section and columns. Please allow me to briefly explain how exactly I'm going to do the invisible shape divider trick. After that, you can watch me creating all from scratch. And if you carefully listen my intro, everything I do in the editor will make much more sense, okay? First and foremost, I'm sure you know that there's no such thing as the invisible shape divider. That's bullshit. We actually don't need anything to physically divide two sections or columns. What we need is to make two elements interact with each other directly. With that being said, our goal is to cut out the bottom side of the top section or column in a way that it will make people think that there actually is some kind of divider being involved. And the only way to cut out parts of any element, not just the image, is to use the mask image. What's the mask image? Simply put together, that's the black and transparent image that's supposed to be attached, quote unquote attached, by using CSS rules, of course, to the particular element. The blackened parts of the mask image are used to keep the host element parts visible, while the transparent areas keep things transparent. As simple as that. And that's exactly how the illusion of divider is to be created in our case. What's left in the end is to simply make two sections or columns overlap in order to fill the gap that's the result of masking or applying the, the mask image to the target section or a column. But the problem here is the fact that we cannot just mask the entire section or the column because all the content inside will be masked too. As you can see, I have added some widgets to my sections column and I don't want to mask them nor any other widget that I might add eventually or subsequently. Okay? So luckily, both sections and columns provide an extra element that is named background overlay. Background overlay is absolutely positioned element atop of the section or the column. It has its own panel in editor. You can add the background to it. It can easily be repositioned and resized by using a little bit of CSS code. So it's just perfect for what we are up to. Now that we have the knowledge and all the means to bring our goals to reality, we just have to build it up. In order to speed things up, I have prepared a blueprint document with all the sections and columns and the content already been created. In the first example, I'll demonstrate how to create that invisible shape divider between two sections. And in the second example, I'll show you how it works with two columns. The last few examples are reserved for showing you how to do the invisible shape divider thing by using my Elementor add-ons. Okay, so let's do that divider thing on two sections first. If I open the background overlay panel of the top section, you'll see that I have made a gradient background by using two colors. There's really nothing unusual to that. Now I'm going to select Advanced tab and expand the custom CSS panel of my top section. Why? Because I have to attach the mask image to the top section, more precisely to the background overlay of the top section. Here's the code that I'm going to use. I don't want to explain the code in details because it might take too much time. I'll rather pay your attention to particular key points only. First of all, what's that selector greater than symbol and elementor background overlay thing at the beginning? Selector keyword is the reference to the section itself and the elementor background overlay is the CSS class, and class name of the background overlay element. By using greater than symbol, I'm letting the browser know that I'm referring to the first child element only. Without that symbol, all of the inner section widgets would inherit that CSS rule as well, and that's something I don't want. 
the mask image property is supposed to provide the path to the mask image. You can copy paste the path to the particular image in a media library. If you open the library, copy the path and then paste between the two quotes. The mask position property first parameter should be the bottom. In this case, in our case. Why? Because our invisible shape divider is in the bottom of the top section. If your mask image is supposed to do the job in reverse fashion, the first parameter should be the top. As for the second parameter, you can either use left, center, right or any number followed by any CSS acceptable unit. Now the mask size. Be sure it's set to cover. I've tried to experiment with contain and custom keywords but it always ended up the, with the mask being too short when it comes to responsiveness. So believe me, the cover is what works perfectly. And the very last property, height, is what I'm going to cancel for a while. Let's say that it's not the right time to pull it out yet. You might have even noticed what just happened to our mask background overlay, but it doesn't matter. Let's call it a hint for now. I'm sure you noticed the WebKit prefix property is being present in our CSS block. And if you wonder why is it for, well, the simple answer is that not all browsers understand what we are up to unless we add that very prefix. I know it looks a little bit messy, but it's here for the reason. Okay, let's handle the bottom section. Likewise, I already added the image background to the background overlay panel, so it's not a gradient this time, it's a plain background image. And now I'm gonna open my bottom section custom CSS panel and do the same and do some code as well. It's gonna be much simpler than the code that we just added to the top section. All right, here's the code. Let's see what the code is meant to do, even though it should be pretty much obvious. So I have increased the height of the background overlay element for 30%, and in the same time, I have moved it up for 30% in order to keep the bottom line in place. And the result is the overlap. I kind of tucked the bottom section under the top section because I want to fill up those cutouts in the top section. Makes sense, right? How about a negative Z index? Well, if I cancel that very property for a moment, you'll see that my bottom section actually covers the top section, and it's because it has a higher stacking order. Hence, I don't want to mess up with the default stacking order of the elements on stage, I'll rather send the background overlay element behind every other element. That's why I'm using the negative Z index value. If I get back now to the top section CSS panel and uncomment the height value that I kept inactive so far, you'll realize that I can also make my top background overlay a little bit taller too, in order to cover up the remaining gaps, if there are any of course. But another reason might be to kind of compensate the loss of height because my invisible shape divider stole a big chunk of it. Before I get to the next example, I'm going to let you know how you can win oh boy image mask add-on for Elementor. So you gotta send me an email with the subject alligator and the message containing your YouTube username. As simple as that. Subject alligator, message your YouTube username. The quickest 10 or even 15 subscribers will get the image mask add-on for free. Others might want to buy it for five bucks. It's a very handy add-on. You can use it to mask image widget or background overlays. All right, let's move, move on to the next example. I'm gonna show you how things work when it comes to columns. First of all, if you want to create two or more columns that sit one on top of another, you'll need the Breaking Bad add-on for Elementor. That is a part of Steroids for Elementor, a bigger add-ons package. It's completely free and the link is in the description of this video. Next important fact is that you cannot use the background overlay feature of the column unless the background type is already active. It means that the background overlay panel of the column will be visible or available only if you selected the background type in the background panel at first place. Not sure why exactly, but it's just the way it is. With that being brought to your attention, let's now add some CSS code to the custom CSS panel of the top column. I'll just copy paste the code because it's going to be much quicker that way. With regards to the CSS properties being used for section and the column, there's actually no difference at all. The only thing being different is the path to my mask image file in a media library. However, there's a difference in how we refer to the Elementor background overlay element of the column. You can see that there's one extra element in the middle, 
but if you just, just keep using it that way you're gonna be fine likewise I'm gonna add required CSS code to my bottom column of course I'll do that by using the, the by pasting the code to its own custom CSS panel once again there's no other difference in a CSS code except the one that relates to how Elementor background overlay element is being referred okay that's all and that's basically it this is how you do that invisible shape divider thing when it comes to column you could actually shape divide left and right hand side as well there are certain tweaks needed to the CSS code but let it be your homework how about the responsiveness I'm sure it's all good and I'm sure simply because I have used percentage units whenever possible stick to percentages because 10% will always be 10% regardless the viewport size okay let me now show you how easy it is to achieve the same goal by using add-ons instead of the custom CSS code so you're gonna need two add-ons the first one is named image mask and it's not free it's gonna cost you five bucks in my gumroad shop gumroad is the only source of income when it comes to these video tutorials and development of other free add-ons or free stuff the next add-on is free and is named overlays that very add-on is the part of a bigger free add-ons package named Oh Boy Steroids for Elementor and which can be downloaded from the official WordPress plugins repository. The link to the plugins landing page is in the description of this video. So first I'll highlight the top section and open its background overlay panel in editor. If I scroll a little bit down I'll get to the section named Oh Boy Image Mask where I'm allowed to pick the mask image from the media library and do some basic tweaks. I have to position my mask image to bottom center as well I gotta select cover for the mask image and make the mask image non-repeatable I'm gonna leave everything else as is next I'll scroll the panel a little bit more down until I get to the second add-on settings the second add-on is named overlays and is used to manipulate the size position and the stacking order of the background overlay element so here I'll just have to increase the height of my top section background element for 20% as simple as that after that I'll highlight the bottom section expand its background overlay panel and in order to make a match to the CSS code used by the very first example of this video I'll increase the height for 30% and in the same time move the background overlay element up for 30% as well I also have to change the stacking order because the bottom section is supposed to be tucked under the top section so if I enter minus one into the Z index input field background overlay element will be sent all the way behind everything else on the stage and that's it sections example done likewise I'll do the same for the columns example the only difference is the mask image I'm gonna pick another one that I have prepared for the purpose of this tutorial of course just to mention that you can download the training file of this tutorial for free is the importable JSON file importable importable by Elementor of course so if you do the import you'll be able to find these mask images image files in your own media library the download info can be found in the description of this video as well another cool thing when it comes to add-ons is that you actually don't need Elementor Pro to make it work it's simply because you no longer need the custom CSS panel that is a part of the Pro package only okay I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I hope you learned something that you can benefit from and the most of all something that makes you a better Elementor guy or a girl if you missed the part on how to win the copy of image mask add-on for Elementor you probably did some fast forward at the wrong time right I made things a little bit more complicated on purpose today and at the end thanks for watching thanks for the support peace and love